<sighs> Nyal Saga, Chapter 13, Gloom's Wooing Now three brothers are named in the story. One was called Thererin, the second Ragi, and the third Gloom. They were the sons of Olof the Hot, and were men of much worth and of great wealth and goods. Thorarin's surname was Ragi's brother. He had the speakership of the law after Rafin Hyingson. He was a very wise man and lived in Varmalek, and he and Gloom kept house together. Gloom had been long abroad. He was a tall, strong, handsome man. Ragi, their brother, was a great manslayer. Those brothers owned in the south Ingi and Laugerness. One day the brothers Thorarin and, and Gloom were talking together, and Thorarin asked Gloom whether he meant to go abroad, as was his wont. He answered, I was rather thinking now of leaving off trading voyages. What hast thou then in thy mind? Wilt thou woo thee a wife? That I will, says he, if I could only get myself well matched. Then Thorarin told off all the women who were unwedded in Borgerfrey, and asked him if he would have any of these. Say the word, and I will ride with thee. But Gloom answered, I will have none of these. Say then the name of her thou wishest to have, says Thorarin. Gloom answered, If thou must know, her name is Halgerda, and she is Housegold's daughter away west in the dales. Well, says Thorarin, tis not with thee, as, this, as the saw says, be warned by another's woe, for she was wedded to a man, and she plotted his death. Gloom said, Maybe such ill luck will not befall her a second time, and sure I am she will not plot my death, but now, if thou wilt show me any honor, ride along with me to woo her. Thorarin said, there is no good striving against it, for what must be is sure to happen. Gloom often talked the matter over with Thorin, but he put it off a long time. At last it came about that they gathered men together and rode off ten in company, west to the Dales, and came to Hauskeldstadel. Hauskeld gave them a hearty welcome, and they stayed there that night. But early next morning Hauskeld sends for fruit, and he came thither at once and Hauskeld was out of doors when he rode into the town. Then Hauskeld told Hrut that men had come thither. What may it be they want? asked Hrut. As yet, says Hauskeld, they have not let out to me that they have any business. Still, says Hrut, their business must be with thee. They will ask the hand of thy daughter Halgera. If they do, what answer wilt thou make? What dost thou advise me to say? says Hauskeld. Thou shalt answer well, says Hrut but still make a clean breast of all the good and all the ill thou knowest of the woman. But while the brothers were talking thus, out came the guests. Hauskeld greeted them well, and Hrut bade Thorarin and his brothers good morning. After that they all began to talk, and Thorarin said, I am come hither, Hauskeld, with my brother Gloom on this errand, to ask for Halgerda thy daughter, at the hand of my brother Gloom. Thou must know that he is a man of worth. I know well, says Hauskeld, that ye are both of you powerful and worthy men. But I must tell you right out that I chose a husband for her before, and that turned out most unluckily for us. Thorarin answered, We will not let that stand in the way of the bargain, for one oath shall not become all oaths, and this may prove to be a good match, though that turned out ill. Besides, Fjostolf had most hand in spoiling it. Then Hrut spoke, Now I will give you a bit of advice, this. If ye will not let all this that has already happened to Halgerda stand in the way of the match, mind you do not let Theostolf go south with her if the match comes off, and that he is never there longer than three nights at a time, unless Gloom gives him leave. But fall an outlaw by Gloom's hand without atonement if he stays there longer. Of course it shall be in Gloom's power to give him leave, but he will not if he takes my advice. And now this match shall not be fulfilled as the other was, without Halgerda's knowledge. She shall now know the whole course of this bargain, and see Gloom and herself set her, settle whether she will have him or not, and then she will not be able to lay the blame on others if it does not turn out well, and this shall be without craft or guile. Then Thorarin said, Now, as always, it will prove best if thy advice be taken. Then they sent, then they sent for Halgerda, and she came thither and two women with her, 
She had on a cloak of rich blue wool, and under it a scarlet kirtle and a silver girdle round her waist, but her hair came down on both sides of her bosom, and she had turned the locks up under her girdle. She sat down between Ruth and her father, and she greeted them all with kind words, and spoke well and boldly, and asked what was the news. After that she ceased speaking. Then Gloom said, There's been some talk between my father and my brother Thor and then myself about a bargain. It was that I might get thee, Hargerda, if it be thy will, as it is theirs. And now, if thou art a brave woman, thou wilt say right out whether the match is at all to thy mind. But if thou hast anything in thy heart against this bargain with us, then we will not say anything more about it. Hargerda said, I know well that you are men of worth and might, ye brothers. I know, too, that now I shall be much better wedded than I was before. What I want to know is what you have said already about the match, and how far you have given your words in the matter. But so far as I now see of thee, I think I might love thee well if we can but hit it off to, as to a temper. So Gloom himself told her all about the bargain and left nothing out, and he asked Hauskold and Fruit whether he had repeated it right. Hauskold said he had, and then Halgerda said, Ye have dealt so well with me in this matter, my father and Fruit, that I will do what ye advise and this bargain shall be struck as ye have settled it. Then Hrut said, Methinks it were best that Hauskold and I should name witnesses, and that Halgera should betroth herself, if the lawman thinks that right and lawful. Right and lawful it is, said Thorin. After that, Halgerda's goods were valued, and Gloom was to lay down as much against them, and they were to go shares, half and half, in the whole. Then Gloom bound himself to Halgerda as his betrothed, and they rode away home south, but Hauskold was to keep the wedding feast at his house, and now all is quiet till men ride to the wedding. See, and uh, that was chapter 13, and Njal's saga has 158 chapters.